So then hello everyone to today's seminar on interval methods and control engineering. It's my great pleasure to welcome today Morgan Louis-Deck from Anse-Bretagne in Bust in France. Morgan uh, received his general uh, engineering degree from the Ecole Centrale de Nantes and a Master of Science degree in Electrical Engineering at the Technical University of Denmark in 2021. Yes, and since then he's working on his PhD subject uh, at the Insta Britannia in Brest, and especially on the topic of stability of groups of robots and his research interests besides uh, the stability analysis of uh, dynamic systems, uh, especially also approaches for guaranteed numerical simulation. And yes, in that domain, Morgan will also talk today about encompassing uh, computation of the ellipsoidal image in a singular case. Morgan, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, so, uh, thank you for your introduction, Andreas. Uh, so today I will uh, present you some um, work I've done recently um, about adapting um, an encompassing method to uh, singular cases with a degenerated ellipsoid uh, in the case of the study of uh, the stability of a dynamical system. So, oops. Um, so the uh, the context behind is that I'm trying to use some uh, set propagation method in order to uh, be able to estimate the reachable state of my dynamical system. So given an initial set as zero um, and a given application, which uh, in practice is often nonlinear, G, I'm trying to find um, a set that encompass uh, the reachable set. So I'm trying to find this blue patatoid uh, called S out. Um, and the main interest behind is to be able to characterize the reachable set, which can be used uh, to study stability. Um, so the interest um, of using an enclosure of uh, the, the, the reachable set um, is to be able to use an algorithm to find this enclosure uh, and then to use this algorithm in the mathematical proofs. And in practice, these algorithms have a limitation in terms of pessimism uh, because there are some type of wrapping effect where the estimated set will be too pessimist um, and also um, there is the limitation of the computational complexity, which has to be limited. And this, in this case, usually um, the algorithms consider specific shapes of sets. Uh, the most common are boxes uh, because they have simple mathematics behind, but deeper uh, research has focused on the use of zonotopes and ellipsoids who gives better precision with a slightly, um, uh, and still have a good computational complexity. Uh, so today I'm going to focus on the ellipsoids. Um, so usually uh, people consider non-degenerated ellipsoids and they use the quadratic um, form with the inequality to describe uh, these ellipsoids. So they are defined from a center mu and a shape matrix gamma. Um, and uh, with the uh, inequality here. And what's also interesting is that there is an affine transformation from the unit sphere to any ellipsoid um, uh, using the center and this ga gamma matrix. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so what we would like to do is given an initial ellipsoid, we have a nonlinear mapping and we would like to be able to characterize the image we have with this mapping. So the existing method I started with, uh, who was developed by Andreas, um, works the following way. So we start from the um, uh, image. So first we linearize uh, the, um, the, the mapping to have uh, 
approximate uh, to approximate sorry the solution uh, with uh, here the the blue uh, ellipsoid and thus we have about the the shape of uh, the result we want to have and then later we will inflate this ellipsoid to be able to encompass the whole um the whole solution and this linearization has some resemblance with um, Kalman filtering, for example, where you have the same type of propagation uh, of the um, ellipsoid of covariance. Um, so then the existing theorem I started from, um, so usually take this uh, linearized ellipsoid, sorry, the ellipsoid given by the uh, linearization and inflate it with um, a certain um, gain, which depends on interval analysis. Uh, I'm going to use the, the graphic to explain uh, the process. Um, <clears throat> so the idea of that theorem was that um, the ellipsoid were to be normalized. So with an F transformation, uh, the ellipsoid on the right were transformed back into spheres. Um, <clears throat> So the um, uh, linearized ellipsoid was transformed into the unit sphere. And then by looking at the norm of the error between the linearized ellipsoid and um, the true image in green, uh, it's possible to find um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, an addition that we have to add to the norm, uh, which is not too pessimistic. Uh, and then when we transform back into uh, the ellipsoids, we are able to have our blue um, uh, enclosure. Uh, so that was the, the, the theorem I started from. And I wanted to adapt it to uh, a case of singularity. So <clears throat> sometimes you have uh, mappings where when you linearize um, uh, the, the mapping, uh, you have a non-invertible Jacobian matrix. Um, and thus, um, the, what you have at the end is a uh, degenerated ellipsoid. Uh, this is often the case when you have um, projection in your system, uh, such as um, a discrete variable uh, measuring uh, a constant variable. You have a projection of one variable on another. Um, or when you have sometimes fluid damping and quadratic appearance of certain variables. And so in this case, um, we can't invert matrices, so we can't use the previous algorithm. So about the generated ellipsoid, um, that can't be defined by using the quadratic form anymore, but we can still consider the affin transformation to define them. Um, so a degenerated ellipsoid is a transformation of the unit sphere, uh, but this transformation is not bijective. Uh, but we will still use this transformation for the theory. Um, so the problem we have uh, by looking at the, at the graf graphic is that um, now when we, linear when we consider the linearized ellipsoid, there are certain dimensions where this linearized ellipsoid is flat, and by inflating it, we may not be able to encompass the whole um, the whole set. So in this case, we need to add new dimensions uh, to this uh, ellipsoid. Um, and here the slide is just to point out that there is a particular case where the application is itself a projection. And even if the um, <clears throat> linearized uh, ellipsoid is degenerated, the solution itself uh, is also reduced in dimensions. So we don't need, in this case, to add new dimensions uh, to the ellipsoid. Um, so more precisely, when I'm saying we're adding uh, dimensions, we're um, adding singular values to the uh, matrix of the ellipsoid. <clears throat> so, mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, 
the uh, matrix of the ellipsoid gamma, if we decompose it with singular value decomposition, uh, we're able to represent the ellipsoid as um, uh, with a three a transformation, a first rotation uh, with the ortho a normal matrix V, which doesn't change uh, the unit sphere. Then there is um, <clears throat> a deformation uh, with the diagonal matrix and another rotation. Um, and the problem when we have a, a singularity is that the diagonal matrix has um, some element of the diagonal that are equal to zero. Uh, and these elements are called the singular values. So if we want to add new dimensions, uh, a possible solution is to replace the zero, the singular values equal to zero to something different from zero. And the process I was uh, testing um, is to um, rotate uh, the ellipsoid and the image of um, the set uh, to align them to the uh, axis of the dimensions. And then by applying um, interval analysis on boxes, we can identify um, the maximum distance uh, the, the green set will have from the center. And this distance, we can consider it as a, a, sing a new singular value for the linearized ellipsoid. And then we can pass from the linearized ellipsoid in red to the orange ellipsoid with dotted lines. And then when we rotate back to the original uh, placement of um, the sets, we can now use this uh, orange ellipsoid to inflate it as uh, with the previous uh, algorithm. Um, and so if you want to uh, generalize the previous algorithm. Um, we're always inflating a certain uh, first guess. Um, uh, so we, we're finding a first guess for the ellipsoid, then inflating it. Um, this inflation depends on interval analysis. Um, in the general case, uh, this first guess is the linearized version. Um, and in the singular case, um, it is this um, uh, modification of the linear li ellipsoid obtained by linearization. Um, and there are some uh, slight adjustments that are required for the algorithm um, with a pseudo inverse. Um, but at the end, we have about the same process um, than before. And the graphical representation is about the same. Uh, just to finish, I would like to present an application case where we could find these degenerated ellipsoids and why I needed to study them. Um, so the, this is a, a, a common example with a group of robots uh, where they have to make a consensus. So they, um, they have to... to place themselves to be equidistant. Um, and uh, this is an example from an article where they are considered to be uh, a second order uh, dynamical system where we can control their acceleration. Um, and the, the difficulty here is that uh, they can only measure the position of the other robot at specific moments. Uh, so the measurement is discrete. Um, uh, but they are synchronized. Um, so there are controllers that are proposed in the literature to solve this type of problem. Um, since the system is linear, it's also possible to study it without much um, difficulty. Um, but if I want to um, represent, uh, sorry, if I want to um, find the reachable set of this system, uh, with an ellipsoid. Uh, so I would have to define an initial ellipsoid and then to uh, alternate between um, the continuous time integration 
of the continuous part of the dynamical system, and then the measurement parts. Um, the problem is that if I um, use a state vector of this ellipsoid of this system, uh, so we usually consider um, the error in position, the error in speed, and here the error also in the measurement. And the problem is, as I said before, uh, the three last variables, when we do a measurement, they are projected on other variables. Um, and so because of the measurement, uh, the ellipsoid becomes singular. We can also even initialize uh, the ellipsoid as, um, as a, a, a degenerated ellipsoid. Um, and so at the end, we have to consider uh, the flatness of the ellipsoid throughout the whole process. Um, okay, so here the singularity is caused by the initial set and the measurements. Um, but by applying uh, the, the modification of the algorithm, we're still able to find um, a reachable set. And in my case, uh, for example, show that this reachable set is included in the initial set and that the system um, has uh, the stable cycles where it has to re-enter or be in the initial set um, every um, uh, uh, frequently. Um, so to conclude, um, the idea of studying uh, the singular case uh, for this ellipsoidal propagation um, is interesting when we want to consider degenerated ellipsoid uh, in our state-based system, uh, and especially for system who which have projection um, or other singular mappings. Um, and right now, I'm trying to use this tool to study the stability of um, nonlinear hybrid system uh, with uh, several uh, mappings um, in chain. Thank you so, for your attention. So then many thanks Morgan, for your presentation. And yes, as usual, the talk is open for the discussion. Okay, may, maybe let me start immediately with the mm -hmm. outlook that you just mentioned. In the outlook, you mentioned that you want to apply your uh, approach also to systems that have hybrid dynamics. Uh, which kind of guard conditions do you want to take into account? Are those linear guard conditions or nonlinear ones? Um, because for linear ones, I think you need to compute an intersection of an ellipsoid with a plane, mm -hmm. something like a hyperplane, and this intersection will be, again, a reduced order ellipsoid. Hmm. And yes, and I think that this will lead to similar kind of uh, yes degeneration properties. So so far, um, I've only studied system which have linear guards, um, which is a, a projection on a plane. Hmm. Uh, because indeed, when the the guard is not uh, linear but is um, non-plane surface, for example, of the state, um, uh, the, the projection on the guard won't be an ellipsoid. Um, but if the state is small enough, an enclosure by an ellipsoid shouldn't be too much pessimistic. Um, and this could be, for example, what we can see. Um, yeah, maybe like this image where the green set um, will not only be on the, um, because by linearizing, uh, we would have um, a plane which is tangent tangent to the, um, to the guard. Um, um, so the method could still be applied, but I'm not sure if the pessimism would be, um, uh, small enough to be able to use the result. There's one other option, I think, in this case, and in the case of a nonlinear guard, could be uh, that you yes, still perform a projection, but to perform a projection on an uncertain uh, plane. Mm. 
this would then be something like, let's say, yeah, you could say something like a thick plane in this case that you have, okay. you're determining uh, more or less the shape of this plane by computing an interval Jacobian over the respective set. Mm. And then uh, the guard would be described by a set itself. Okay, yes, and okay, uh, uh, okay. And so the output would be a kind of a uh, union of uh, many ellipsoids, right? Yes, it would be something like the union over the intersection of uh, mm. all the ellipses with uh, is an uncertain plane. Yes, I, I think it's it would be interesting to to test. Yeah, and the other question that I have at the moment uh, is uh, in the first theorem that you mentioned. You made the comparison between uh, yes, a Kalman filter, a classical uh, extended Kalman filter approach, where you need the Jacobian to approximate uh, the mapping at some respective reference point. Uh, did you try out also uh, in your case, where at, at least at the midpoint of the ellipsoid you get singularity, that you replace this matrix um, with the predicted something like the predicted covariance? by the outcome of an uncentered Kalman filter that you firstly determine sigma points and then perform a more or less a covariance computation over them? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking for. Well, uh, uh, if, you, if you just look at the top left image, mm -hmm. and if you assume that the midpoint of the red ellipsoid is the point where you're performing the linearization, the midpoint. Mm -hmm. And at that point, your mapping G is singular. Mm -hmm. uh, what you could do alternatively is use, for example, in this case, four sigma points, like you would do in the case of an uncentered mm -hmm. common filter in a two-dimensional system, those are four points. Okay. Perform the individual mapping of those four points and use the, those points in order to uh, estimate the prediction covariance. And this would be in a replacement for the uh, first summon on the right-hand side of this AK times G times AK transposed. Um, yes, maybe, maybe it would work uh, when the, the, the Jacobian is only uh, singular at the, the center point. Um, yes, for projections, obviously it doesn't work. And, for, and also if your initial set is a degenerated ellipsoid, um, it, it will remain um, uh, degenerated with this method. Mm -hmm. Okay. But maybe it would be interesting to test. It could give other pessimism than um the the method I'm proposing right now where I have to take into account the singular values because yeah considering these sigma points could guess uh the singular values in the process yes and now as you just mentioned the singular values uh how do you choose them that you uh, is is there some kind of optimization being performed or is it just intelligent guessing uh, right now, um, it's more about um, um, so for the method you could choose any singular value. Uh, the what would change is the pessimism you have. So if you have mm -hmm. a, a good guess, you have small pessimism. If you have a, a bad guess, you have a high pessimism. Um, so the choice is arbitrary right now. Well, I mean it's. Um, uh, uh, approximative because I'm trying to find uh, this maximum distance uh, sigma nu uh, by interval analysis, but this interval analysis itself um, has some pessimism. Uh, so usually I, I consider a sigma nu which is um, bigger than on the image. Um, and if in reality the green set is far from this distance, uh, it gives very bad pessimism. So I think there could be more uh, efforts put into the choice of the singular value. Um, but for the the system I've studied so far, um, 
like if I find the equation, yeah, here, here it's where I try to explain how we choose the singular values. Um, so yeah, we try to find, uh, so the, we, we transform the image um, uh, with the, the rotation and then we try to find what is the the maximum value of any component of the vector um, uh, by interval analysis. So it's it's quite pessimistic. But uh, maybe there could be other solutions that give better approximation or better guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say I have one final question. Uh, at the end, you mentioned uh, this formation control approach. And what one could think of, uh, I think the controller that you had, this was a linear approach with uh, a very limited uh, amount of degrees of freedom. Uh, did you already think of using your technique to optimize this controller? Um, so... Let me go back there. Uh, I'm not, I haven't really uh, think about optimization issues. Um, my current objective is to be able to study more complex system, uh, considering nonlinear controller or nonlinear behavior, uh, as well as um, maybe asynchronicity between the robots. Um, um and i'm not sure how i could adapt uh my method to find um optimality in the controller uh because for example i could test um a set of parameters and see if um for any elements of this set uh the system stay is still stable um um, or I could look more into the details. What is the shape of the reachable set? Um, it's the direction in which I was thinking is uh, since you're at this at the moment here, you have a linear model. Mm -hmm. uh, for the linear model, uh, you start with your generate ellipse set. The result will again be a degenerate ellipse set. Mm -hmm. uh, and your parameter, for example, in the control law, this parameter C. Mm -hmm. influences the control in a linear manner. Mm -hmm. That means also your state equations depend linearly uh, on C. Mm -hmm. And this also influences the shape matrix of your control system in a linear manner. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it has linear dependency on the shape matrix of the ellipsoid or the degenerate ellipsoid. Yes. Now, what you could do is you could compute a reachable set with your approach Mm -hmm. uh, which is a quadratic form. Obviously, uh, this depends in a quadratic manner mm -hmm. uh, on uh, your control parameter that you have introduced. And now what you could try to do is perform uh, an, uh, is an approximation or an estimation of the optimal control gain in order to reduce the reachable set as fast as possible. And okay. this uh, is, I think, uh, is a just classical quadratic optimization program. Mm, yes, yes. We don't have to, yes, because if you're studying um, a linear system with linear mapping, uh, you don't have to um, uh, take into account um, um, well, I mean, you can present everything with matrices um and uh, uh, algebra computation for mm -hmm. for uh, uh, yes this optimization yes and the thing is uh, i think this uh, still works uh, for not too ugly nonlinear uh, nonlinear systems because then this inflation parameter row that you presented at the beginning is quite small uh, yes. is this inflation in the theorem here in the equation 17 and I think uh, one could try also to optimize uh, the controller gain still. If the controller is linear, uh, one could still use this approach uh, also to perform an optimization, maybe even to combine it with linear matrix inequality techniques. And then uh, it would be something like, for example, 
the trace of the shape matrix would be something uh, that is related uh, to the size of the reachable set. something I haven't point out uh but the interest of this uh well the, the original method or the um uh, modified version is that to be able to to compute uh, the ellipsoid you only need to know um, what is the image of the center and to be able to encompass the value of the Jacobian of the mapping um, so it's not required to have the um, analytical expression of the mapping, mm -hmm. which yeah. is relevant in the case of um, uh, continuous timed um, uh, differential equation. Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. Okay, do we have any further question from the audience? I think this doesn't seem to be the case. Then again, many thanks, Morgan, for your presentation. Thanks and for yes, to all of you, have a nice Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and weekend. Yes, and now we have a small exception to announce because our next speaker will be from the Arizona State University. And because of the time shift to the US, uh, we will have our next seminar in two weeks, but not on Friday. It will be on Thursday evening, Central European time. And yes, I'll send the announcement uh, out as usual at the beginning of, uh, yes, uh, yes, let's say in 10 days from now. Okay, then have a nice weekend and see you soon.